So you read the title. Let's talk about Naruto and the SCP universe. It'll be similar in nature to my What If Goku Was an SCP series, which you can find in the top right hand corner. But instead of just story, I'll comment on various things along with the story. Before we can add Naruto into the mix, we have to reflavor a lot of the Naruto lore into the SCP universe. So let's start with Naruto's origins, as such in Churiki, shall we? On an undisclosed site or in an undisclosed time, way underground beneath steel barriers and miles of dirt and rock, was a dingy rusty cell. Inside that cell sat a young woman, dressed in rags. She sat far away from the rusted bars. Her black eyes were filled with loathing and fury. They contradicted well with her beautiful, yet innocent looking face of features. Her cell was empty. Besides her, she sat on her tail, or rather, tails, with her knees held closely to her chest and her peculiar ears scanning her surroundings like a rotating periscope. Her hands reached down towards where her lower torso and thighs met, pulled a piece of brow liver. She flinched at the barking and dropped her piece of succulent meat on the ground. Damn it! The fox-like girl screamed. She jolted straight up to her feet with her ears drawn back, tail swirling around her like the rays of the sun and fangs bearing. The barking kept on going and it got even fiercer. If her eyes didn't give away her anger, now her whole body showed it. You will not hold me here any longer. The vulpine humanoid took a singular step towards her poorly made and poorly maintained cell and the dozens of dogs all barked in unison and kept barking and kept barking. She took another step, or at least she tried. Fury in her eyes turned into fear. She was quite literally paralyzed. Get, 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 get these stupid dogs away from me. She used every ounce of courage to continue her speech. I am a goddess. I have unlimited power, unlimited time. I have felled many a man and many a kingdom. I fear no one, not a single man or woman, and especially not dogs. She lied and she knew it. She couldn't stand them. She was afraid of dogs. She couldn't explain why, but she could never get near one. Her tails fell forward towards the ground and kicked up some dust as they came down like a soft sheet. She squatted back down where she was originally sitting and began to hold her knees tightly once again. She picked up her fallen piece of meat and began to chew and hoped that the dogs would shut up soon. The mongrels eventually quieted down with the help of the men who imprisoned her. They came every three days to feed both the canines and her. She was fed the same as them. A mixed bag of mystery meats and dry kibble, though it wasn't always like this. If she behaved, she could get rewarded with beef, liver, and fruits. This was her sixth time back in the cell, and every time they removed privileges from her. The men clad in black armor and glossy face shields made the rounds. She knew she was last, and she knew they were always watching. She had already killed various of their agents, so she knew she was much more powerful. They had only recaptured her due to her own negligence of the humans, but that wouldn't happen never again. Her anger started to bubble up again, but she had to calm down. She heard footsteps approaching her and she tried to act nonchalant. A guard approached her cell with a tray. Instantly, she knew what he had. Pineapple chunks and cow livers. Her hunger and eagerness betrayed her attempted poker face and she started salivating. The guard stopped just outside of her cell and looked at her. Although she couldn't see his face, she knew what he was about to do. The guard flipped the tray over and everything fell on the ground. SCP-953 began to rage. The guard picked up his gun and quickly called for more backup while the dogs began to bark once again and in that instant she fainted and disappeared. SCP-953 is a vulpine humanoid. She possesses polymorphic abilities that let her shape shift into various shapes and sizes. However, her true nature is that of a colossal red fox. She possesses nine tails exactly and is said to be able to destroy the entire villages in a single night. She prefers to take the appearance of an attractive Korean woman. She has been noted to express various levels of different abilities such as shape shifting, psychic, and natural strength and endurance. She also claims to have a large amount and reserves of chakra, although no one at the foundation knows what this means. She has managed to escape captivity various times due to her charm and low cunning. All personnel are advised to grant her no more leniency and treat her with the bare minimum of essentials until she has lost all resistance. Now when I was reading through SCP-953's wiki, link in the description, I found it to be well 
kind of cringe. She has been able to escape numerous times but can only do so with her psionic abilities. It doesn't state exactly how she is able to take control of the Foundation's members, especially six times, and especially with her fovea, which is domesticated canines, and they're always in front of her. She also has a strong hatred of furries, which I find kind of hilarious. She is also just pure evil in the original wiki. She seems to have no goal or nothing that suggests her origins. Anyways, try to make it a bit better. Before that, if you're liking the video so far, how about a like and a subscribe? Thanks. Now let's get to our favorite blondie. Intelligence was never his strong suit, nor was strength or anything really. At least, that's what Naruto always thought of himself. He was born and raised in a monastery, learning and relearning the various arts, martial arts, meditation, and channeling your inner power, or what the monks who raised him called chakra. He never understood it, yet he did as he was told. Naruto was wild, impulsive, reckless, and curious to a fault. He didn't really fear anything, at least that's what he told himself over and over again. He also didn't really believe anything the monks told him about his origins. He looked vastly different from any of them, being born with blonde hair, bright blue eyes, and a fire lit underneath him, an eagerness to keep moving, and an insatiable hunger to do more, much more. But these feelings, he couldn't convey to his teachers. They told him he'd grow out of it, that it was just a phase, but he relieved none of it. He always suspected the authority around him, not to live inside the monastery, but the monastery itself was located within the village. Various students attended the village school, and so did he, even in more modern academics. He was a complete failure. The few monks who raised him were nice enough towards him, but never in a loving sense, more like toleration. But the other kids, most would laugh and jeer at him, talking behind his back, or even physically assaulting him, though he always fought back. He didn't understand why they were so vastly crueler towards him. Some of the village folk even feared him, though he never understood why. He overheard various times people called him a demon or devil, unnatural, a monster, a problem. Some even said he shouldn't be allowed to live. Naruto didn't believe he was born here. He believed he was born somewhere far away, where he was loved and where they were waiting for him. The monks themselves were stoic and never inched on any of the questions Naruto posed on them. Naruto was 12. He was nearing his next step into becoming one of them. Nothing too drastic, but he was expected to give up more of his worldly possessions to become more stoic, more like them and less like himself. He hated it. He hated everyone around him. He hated the monks to kids, the teachers, he hated, no, he didn't really hate anyone. If he really hated someone, it would be himself. He coped by pulling pranks and being a nuisance. If they were going to call him a monster, a demon, then so be it. He seemed to always run into trouble, vandalizing the stone statues spread throughout the village and pulling harmless pranks. Yep, this is a Naruto setting in a modern world, like how the SCP Foundation is set in. There is advanced technologies. And I did try to introduce the Leaf Village, sort of. I don't think it can be the Leaf Village without ninjas. And I couldn't really see fitting in ninjas into the story. Let me know down in the comments how you would fit the Naruto verse into the SCP verse. Naruto at this stage knows nothing about J2s, but he has been training because he was left with monks who have taught him about chakra and some martial arts. So far, he's been pretty faithful to the original, at least as far as I can make it. But now, there will be a bit divergence, but yeah, let's continue. On a particular day, he ran into the wilderness after graffitiing some statues of old men and mooning the local constables of the village. As he ran into the forest, he kept running. Quickly, he realized he was lost, but out of the corner of his eye, he saw something. A light source, a small wooden shack. He decided to approach the shack and knocked on a heavy wooden door. No answer. He knocked again, again. No answer, just a crackling of a fire inside. He pushed against the door but it was barred shut so he tried the windows. He tried to lift them up but couldn't. It was starting to get cold and dark. He tried again and again to force himself into the shack and Naruto quickly lost his temper. He picked up a rock and slammed it into the window. The window shattered and he carefully crawled inside. He was astounded at what he saw. The shack was small and empty except for two things. A fireplace still crackling with fire and a luxurious looking desk. If seats to accommodate to. Naruto decided to sit down on the closest chair. He noticed how luxurious and comfortable the seat was, and it even spun. He began spinning and spinning until he felt dizzy, and for the first time in a long time, he smiled to himself. Ahem, can we get down to business? Naruto heard a voice speak. 
you can only describe it as otherworldly, seemingly out of nowhere. A strange humanoid sat in front of him. On the other side of the desk, he donned a business suit, purple with gold engravings. His face was indescribable. He spoke in a sophisticated yet demonic tone, and his posture was relaxed yet annoyed. His fingers were intertwined as he awaited for the young boy to respond. Who, who are you? Well, young boy, that matter is confidential. In the end, it matters not. Now, let's get down to business. The demonic figure rolled up his sleeves. Naruto noticed his skin. It was a dark red and grainy. Business? What do you mean? Whatever you want, I can give you. For a price, of course. Then again, what could a boy like you possibly want? A toy? Perhaps a car? Or a plane? Maybe... Naruto spoke before thinking. A friend. Demonic figure raised his brow at him and stared. Although he was smiling, his pitch black eyes never showed his true emotions. He finally broke the silence with a chuckle. <laughs> a friend, is it? The demon began pulling a drawer and proceeded to take out a quill and parchment. He began writing. What was your name, boy? Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. Okay, Naruto. What are you prepared to give me for this? Anything. Everything. The demon began laughing hysterically. SCP-738 is a matched set of mahogany furniture, consistent of three pieces, a desk, a chair, and a throne, all with brass embellishment and purple royal padding. This SCP will only take effect when a sentient being sits on a chair. Then, an entity will appear sat opposite of them. They will attempt to negotiate over a wish of said sentient being until a contract can be formed and signed, leading to the granting of said wish at a cost. I love the way the young think, always in absolutes. As SCP-738 resumed writing, he suddenly stopped as a buzzing noise started to come from inside the desk he was writing on. He seemed puzzled, but opened a drawer nonetheless and picked up a cell phone. He answered the call, and the demon began talking with someone. Naruto couldn't understand what was being said. He talked in a strange language, but he could tell by the demon's voice and flexions and body posture that he was getting angry. Finally, Demon hung up the call and put the phone back inside the drawer. <laughs> Looks like someone has already claimed what I was going to take. Just who are you? Exactly, Naruto. Naruto did not speak. Fine, whatever. It should suffice. They're done. Read them over if you want. Once you're satisfied, just sign and you'll get what you wanted. Naruto began reading, but the demon used a lot of complicated words he didn't yet understand. But what he did understand was that he would get a friend in exchange for being a jail cell. J jail cell? What does that mean? You'll help keep a fearsome deity locked away forever, and then you'll get your friend. Forever? What if I die? SCP-738 looked up from his desk and stared deeply into Naruto's eyes. He again began laughing. Oh boy, if only you knew. <laughs> Just sign the damn papers. Naruto hesitated, but what else was left for him? All he ever wanted was for someone to talk to, someone to share his ramen with. He contemplated it, but in the end, he signed the papers. Well, that's that. Thank you for making this process easy. Usually, most folks try to squirm their way out of a fair pay. The demon began pulling all of his paperwork back into the drawers. Oh, and Naruto? Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Thank Naruto fainted in an instant, and he began to have a terrible nightmare. And yeah, that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and let me know what other topics you would like to see me discuss, and also how your version of Naruto as an SCP would look like. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you made it this far. You won't regret it.